Today, we're going to take a look at these eight coreless compact inflators here and try to determine if one is better than the rest. I'm going to test these with both 2 amp and 4 amp hour high performance if available. To do this, we're going to test it on a car tire, a five gallon air tank, and we're also going to take a look at the thermals. But before we do that, we're first going to look at the features and then go from there. So here we have the Makita 18 volt. On the front, you'll notice we have our three accessories and a LED light here at the bottom. You can see that LED light displays right there. Back on the top, we have a digital display. So you can go ahead and set the actual pressure. Of course, you want the unit to turn off at. Now, when you go to use it, you are gonna have to hold the trigger the whole time, and then it will automatically shut off. Now it does have a little hose holder. So here we have the Bauer. Now alongside the top, you'll notice we do have those accessories. Old style gauge here. You're gonna have to hold the trigger with this one and then of course be checking this as you go. Heart, kind of the same deal. Accessories right up here on the top, but here you do have a digital gauge. But you're gonna have to monitor that and release the trigger. So the Ryobi, which has the accessories right here on the front. Now this also has a digital gauge there on the back. Again, you're going to have to monitor that with rigid. A little bit different setup here as you can see. Now those accessories are on the front here. You do have this different style quick connect here. Gauge. You can see there is manual mode and then if we turn this it'll switch to automatic. So then we can adjust the desired pressure, pull the trigger once, and it's going to automatically inflate to that desired pressure. You do not have to hold the trigger on this one if you are in automatic mode. Another interesting feature with this rigid, if we take the battery off the back, it comes here with this 10 foot cable. You can plug this into your car, and then this other end goes right here in the back like so. Now the skill, small compact unit. On the side, we can see the hose is wrapped around and then we have those accessories stored right here. Now on the face, we power it up. It displays the pressure and then the desired pressure. You can go ahead and adjust that as needed and then hit the play button to start it up. KM12 here, you notice it's pretty similar to the skill. On the back side here, you'll notice the hose and those accessories in the center there. Now this hose does have a screw on type connection on the front we have our power button and then you can go ahead and adjust that pressure to desired and then you're going to hit this little button down here and it will start the inflator the cobalt little compartment that's where you're going to find those accessories the hose is stored right along top of the handle and then down here on the side four buttons again hit it in the center to power it up and you can adjust that desired pressure and then all you're going to do is hit the little run button down here to start it up. Here we'll get the max pressure and DB. So when we look at the data here you can see definitely the rigid had the highest max PSI but with that, it also had the highest dB level as well. This is a P19575R14. We're gonna go ahead and run this up to 35 PSI. See how accurate it is. We have an inline gauge here. So we'll run through them all with two amp hour batteries. Then we'll come back use four amp hour batteries.
I'm gonna run the same test here with the four amp hour batteries. Now overall, filling the tire with a two amp hour battery versus a four amp hour battery, you can definitely see for the most part, uh, they did about the same. Unless you're looking at the rigid here, the rigid basically chopped off a full minute there running that four amp hour max battery. But I will say that four amp hour max battery is not on the sheet of recommended batteries to use. But in any case, if you got it, to me, you're gonna use it, so. Rigid being the only one with the ability to run off of 12 volts, we're gonna do the same thing, run her up to 35 PSI. Rigid here with 12 volts, and yeah, performance is definitely a lot lower than running even the two amp hour battery. You're looking at pretty much double the time, which makes sense, I mean, you're going from 18-ish volts down to 12 or a little bit more depending on you know your charging system on whatever vehicle. Now we'll see how long it takes to fill this five gallon tank here to 90 PSI. So filling the five gallon tank there to 90 PSI, again, the rigid did come out on top. Now one thing I would like to point out, some of these I did have to run it five minutes, give it the duty cycle time of five minutes to cool down, and then I ran that additional time, of course, to get it up to that 90 PSI. The only ones that could run consistently would be the rigid there, it did it in the five minutes, and then of course the M12, you can run it for 10 minutes and the skill, you can actually run that one uh, for 15 and the cobalt you can run for 10 as well. So of course that's why some of these have a much lower time is to do with what that on off duty cycle is. Now here are some tech specs here. If you wanna go ahead and pause this quick, if you're looking for that warranty, the model, that sort of stuff. But what's the takeaway? Basically, there's only really one that stands out above the rest, and to me, that is, of course, the rigid here. So if you want the highest performance and auto feature with the ability, if for some reason you don't have a battery, you can run off the 12 volt socket. You know, yeah, it is $70, but you want the best of the best and it has pretty good features. I think you're gonna have to go with the rigid. You know, for the rest, I'm gonna tell you, it really depends on what platform you are running. Now, I would probably stay away from the Makita in this scenario because you're paying $120 for just the tool. Similar performance here to the rest. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would spend my money there. To me, if you're running also another platform, pick up one of these for that other platform. That being said, I wouldn't use these for anything bigger than you know, pretty much a car tire or a lawnmower tractor tire, or wheelbarrow, something like that. These are not something I would recommend for truck tires, egg tires, anything like that. To me, these just cannot handle that sort of work. Yeah, you can get it done, but you also have to remember again that duty cycle. So just keep that in mind, you know. For those, that's something you're gonna to wanna to step up to the next size, which like I do have over here, which we will test 
uh, in an upcoming video or even a cordless air compressor, something like that. To me, these are for small stuff, maybe something like a basketball, a lawnmower tire, up to, you know, of course, a car tire. Hopefully uh, you found the video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on another one.